Hey there everybody, in this video we're going to actually be going over a um, marketing ideas session that I had with somebody who is a subscriber of the channel. And um, if you are trying to grow your brand or your business, this is actually going to be really helpful. So this is the process that I use to help clients get very, very clear on what it is that they're selling, who they're targeting. And so it's really a great exercise and you can follow along and I think you can get a lot of really great insights into what you should be doing, how you should position your offer, how you should create your offer, what kinds of uh, people groups should you be targeting with your offer, how can you provide the most benefit to these people, and then how can you productize what you're offering. So um, let's get into today's video. Hey there, my name is Brandon Brashears. I make daily digital marketing videos. So if you're looking to grow your brand or your business with digital marketing, be sure to subscribe. If you need any help, if you have questions about how should I package my offer, how should I uh, and create targeting for my offer. How should I create my client avatar? Those kind of questions. Be sure to comment below. I'd be happy to jump on a Zoom session just like this with you and record one of these as well. So I'm going to hopefully be doing this more frequently here with people that are subscribed on this channel. So today we're talking to Brandon Gates and he has a bunch of expertise in IT and cybersecurity, specifically with the Department of Defense and things. And so he's going to take that and try to package it up and sell what he has as a course for additional, for people that want to get started being a contractor as well. I think it's a really valuable um, engagement that we had. And I think that is because um, there's some really great insights to take. Number one, you've, figuring out who you're targeting and who this is going to be for is very, very important. We talked about a lot of options and in your business, you're gonna find that there's a lot of different ways you can take it. There's a lot of different ways that you can package it a lot of different angles that you can use to sell your product. And so it's important to get, I think, really, really clear on who is the ideal customer, right? There's tons and tons of people that you could be targeting, but really who is that ideal customer? You can get really specific with digital marketing. And so as a result, I think it's important to make sure that you're targeting the right groups of people, that you're using the right language to target these people, and you're gonna be finding people that are going to really resonate well with your offer. So without further ado, here is our first ever um, marketing review that we're doing. We're gonna do some idea, idea creation. I think you're gonna enjoy this video. All right, so um, tell me about your your course. I know you like outlined it a little bit. Um, I think you have some like super good specific experience in the industry and like your, your niche that you're targeting. So yes. Who's your Who's your target, and what are your thoughts for like the specific like core product that you're thinking of? Yeah. So <laughs> I have a. So my target is are uh, I haven't narrowed it down, <clears throat> um, and that's what I would need help from you <clears throat> with. Um, I have a, an actual. I had someone create a marketing plan for me. Um, I can pull that out, but <clears throat> hold on one second, Brian. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so I had a digital marketing strategy created, and this is something that I, I should have created on my own. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm not looking back at it, um, it has. It has on here ways to target, you know, um, you know, my segmentation and things of that nature for Facebook, LinkedIn, um, has the demographics, the detail targeting, um, uh, you know, particular work industries, but it really doesn't have a, uh, you know, it has the age, the age designation on it as well. 18 to 45 years old. Sure. Um, that's a pretty big gap though. I think, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, IT and technical services. I'm looking for people uh, that are uh, looking to penetrate the cybersecurity uh, uh, job market. Mm -hmm. um, there's a huge demand for uh, cybersecurity professionals right now. Sure. And, uh, looking looking for people that are you know tired of their tired of what they're doing. Um, you know, and looking to be paid more. Now, I don't know if that's as detailed as you need as far as targeting goes, and I'm pretty sure I could, it could drill down even further. Sure. I just haven't done that that research. 
Well, so I, I think that drilling down would probably have significant benefit because that's, you know, a very, so if we're going to call it like a money-making opportunity, mm -hmm. right? I think that there's probably sub-segments in there that would be a lot more profitable for you. Okay. So for example, if you have somebody that does IT and networking right now, Mm -hmm. They added on a skill set that they could charge more to their clients that they already have and that they've already retained, right? It's just like an add-on. So it makes a lot more sense to be like, hey, yeah, this is me versus somebody who's out of high school who's like, hey, I don't know what I want to do with my life. IT sounds cool. Mm -hmm. but that's diff very different um, aspects of, of targeting. And so it's okay. like not to say that one would work better than the other with, without testing. There's no way right. to know for sure. Right, and right. so like I would just specifically target a demographic that has enough people in it that allows you to create marketing and messaging and content that's going to speak to that demographic though. I got you. Because if sense. you go into the money making, you're going to be competing with like Ty Lopez and yeah. Pat Flynn and you know all of these other super general mm. like internet opportunity, income opportunity type things, which is not necessarily bad, but it just makes it difficult. There's more competition, right? But if yeah. you, when you target... IT professionals that are doing, you know, databases and stuff for, let's say, health and dental offices. That's even like more specific, right? Would that be right. a target? I, I'm not sure, but I know that there's HIPAA requirements and privacy requirements and, you yep. know, all of those things involved. So like that might be a good segment. And so obviously the way that you talk to those people would be very different than the way that you target um, like financial services professionals or loan professionals or like, you know, different segments of, of audiences there. Understood. Understood. I mean, how would I go about? <clears throat> so tell me about your story. How did you get started in this and, and who do you work with primarily? So I, so I joined, I joined the military September 11, 2001. I was actually in the, uh, wow. On, on that day, on that day. Wow. They, they ended up having to, um, delay us by five days um, because they shut all transportation down but i entered the army as a, a 25 bravo uh, information systems analyst <clears throat> and so after about six seven years in i i um, signed up to uh, apply to become a warrant officer um, and they they specialize um, in their fields in the military um, it, they're very niche <laughs> i guess mm -hmm. you and um, I did that for a while, and I was accepted into a um, a role on the national cyber protection team. Um, um, we went through extensive training, um, and we worked with several agencies, I'll say, to go out and do vulnerability assessments, penetration testing, um, cyber threat hunting. Um, and I was actually a cyber operations engineer on that team. I was a... Uh, <clears throat> cyber operations in there on the blue team. So I um, cool. ended up with a condition um, several years back in both of my hips that retired me early, it retired me at 16 and a half years. So um, now I'm a contractor um, and I do information systems, uh, security engineering um, <clears throat> as a hustle to, you know, uh, supplement my, my retirement income. But I'm also obviously looking to expand sure. and, and train some, you know, train some folks. I have a vast network of uh, folks that specialize in, in defensive and offensive cyber operations, you know, that can help me with the, the course creation, the content. They're just not, they don't have the, uh, they're not looking at it from a business perspective. Like sure. I, they're like a s operator. Like right. doing it for sure. That makes a lot of sense. Exactly. So I think that that is super compelling as far as your unique selling proposition. Like you've been trained at a, a very high level. You have extreme competence in it and you know what you're talking about, which is great. And I think like, <clears throat> so the, the skills that you have, who would benefit the most from them as far as like, if you wanted to go out and create a business right now, which, which kind of companies would benefit the most from your skill set? Uh, banks, I would say banks would, would definitely benefit from it. Got um, it. But banks are wide open. Um, a lot of the stuff that, <laughs> well, this isn't classified, but a lot of the stuff that happens, you know, they don't broadcast it on the news. Yeah. You hear about it like three years later. And they're like, right. oh, exactly. exactly. There's data breaches for health records and all these things. Right. Exactly. And so, yeah, the first thing that pops to my mind are banks. And I actually wrote an article on that 
Um, I, in fact, I have, I have to post it. Um, so, to my website. <clears throat> who gets who gets bank jobs? As far as who would be like the kind of people that would benefit from learning the skill set that they could then go out and target banks to use this skill? Uh, typically, penetration testers. Okay. Yeah, uh, and analysts. And analysts. Do you think yeah. that those people come from a certain background in general, or they um, just like hey, I'm going to learn IT systems or like I. I, you, to be, I can't answer that question. I don't know. Got it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I can tell you most of them are male. Yeah, I'm I mean, sure that it's probably that way. So uh, without knowing, <clears throat> without knowing distinctly like what the end target group would be, mm -hmm. um, like you just would have to test different segments ultimately. So targeting mm -hmm. people that want to do like, you could probably do healthcare IT, you could do banking IT specialists and, and target different demos for that and job titles. Um, is there a, so like, what would you say the, if somebody learned these skills and started working for a bank or, like a company, how much would they make per year? Would you say? Um, it depends on their experience. Sure. Um, I know <clears throat> that some pen testers can work from home, you know, banking $200,000 a year easily. Got it. So, yeah, you know, like the, the reason why I'm asking that is you could target demographics of, of income. So that's a different angle of it. So mm. IT type technical people that are probably making between 40 and 60 a year where it's like they have some money, that's mm -hmm. disposable. It's not a tremendous amount, but they have enough mm -hmm. to be like, you know what? I want to reach up and get that next step, the next level. How do I hit six figures? Okay. Especially if somebody's making like 60 to 80,000, right? right? An extra step up to hitting six figures. That's like yeah. the next step of like, oh, that's the good life type of a thing. Right, right, right. That's, that's a great point. I hadn't looked at it like that. Yeah, I, I don't, I really don't have much of a marketing background, obviously. I, you know, I'm spinning my wheels trying to figure this stuff For sure. out i'm doing a lot of reading and, you know. totally well it's it's like never never ending is the thing yeah. I, I, it's never ending so even when you're doing it all day long there's always new stuff coming out that you have to be watching for so um like i think that you know approaching it from either those two like doing a, a career enhancement or a career shift that is relatively you know easy to get into that gives good job security good quality life and things like that mm -hmm. <clears throat> would kind of be the benefit there. Um, and then even like people that are in college and learning like a skill set right now that they want to get a degree in mm -hmm. or recently graduated or other demos like that. Um, that, that might be a, a super interesting way. I, I think though that if you're targeting college graduates or college students, they're probably committed to going to college right value in that that degree which is what you're you're kind of like you're an alternative or an enhancement to it so you'd probably be a little bit difficult in in doing that so um like trying to think of of ways and, and angles to sell this with so you had mentioned you were researching platforms and things um mm -hmm. i think either thinkific or kajabi works really well for mm -hmm what you're trying to do. I've already moved forward with Thinkific. I've already started posting. Solid. Perfect. Yeah. That's awesome. Because I was going to say, I actually prefer Thinkific to, um, to Kajabi. I've built lots of Thinkific sites for people. Um, yeah. And I just like how it's easy to sell and easy to manage. And like everybody that I build stuff for can go in and edit it and handle it afterwards too. Yeah. So like, I think that doing you know, specifically business to business type, which is what like you're, you're engaging in, right? You're, you're targeting professionals that are having the, the chance for career improvement, career enhancement. Mm -hmm. I would consider that more business to business than business to consumer marketing. Mm -hmm. um, and then also like another angle could be, and as I'm thinking about this, you could target people who are in side, like in, internally, like, okay, I work for this bank and my job is security director. Like, mm -hmm. You know, okay, we'll add that skill set so that you're making sure that everything is up to par and you're, you know, handling things properly. And then they could get the bank to pay for it um, or the organization wow. that they work for. 
Yeah, so, I mean, how do you find these 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 segments? What do you what do you use? I mean, sure. So let me show. You. I'll I'll sort of show you an example. So that like having that end product in mind, which is you'll be competent in cybersecurity and you'll know how to do X, Y, and Z and everything will be to the highest level, right? And I don't know what that would be called, but like all of those technical terms that you're going to learn uh -huh. and discover by the end of the training and you'll be like certified. So Thinkific has that, that questions and stuff. So making, uh -huh. making it so that they pass a test and that they're competent in it is important and valuable. So I work with um, one of my clients. He does veterinary dentistry. Mm -hmm. I'm continuing education courses. Mm -hmm. so, like dentistry is a weird subject for veterinarians because they're like nervous about they are going to get the dog or the cat under anesthesia. They're going to be working on it and, and they're going to get into surgery and then they're going to come up on something that they're not equipped to handle. Mm -hmm. And so like that level of anxiety and fear makes them be like, you know what? I just don't want the dental services. And so they're, they're letting a lot of money slip through their practice. Right. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we teach veterinary dentistry through CE and what well, Brett does, he's really good at what he does. He's like one of the best in the industry He's boarded specialist. Mm -hmm. And so we do different courses, which like uh, he's got courses for technicians, course, courses for veterinarians. Um, and anyways, oops, I'm going to go back here, but they they cover the different disciplines of what, what he does. And then he has an inclusive one. So his courses are right around $495 to $895 per course. Wow. They're um, vetted by the, the governing body for the veterinary industry that lets you get continuing education. Mm -hmm. So they're, it's called race approved. It's R A C E. It stands for the credential of something or others. I don't remember what it stands for, but what we do is we use webinars to say like, we're going to give you, we're going to do a webinar that's free and we say we're going to teach you three tips to make your extractions go faster. So that's like very specific, right? To extractions. And then he has a course for extractions on dogs, a course for extractions on cats. And then at the end of the webinar, he teaches three really actionable, helpful pieces of information. It's not like the whole course though, and they still need more information, right? And then they get the they get the ability to get this, the course at a special offer. Plus they get the continue, continuing education that they need anyways. And then they're going to feel confident and secure in their dental work. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe it's depending on how you did your, your course, let's say you were targeting professionals that worked as the data security person, right? You're going to talk about maybe four vulnerabilities that most companies don't even realize they have and how to mm -hmm. fix them type of okay. a thing or like two of them, right? You just go over, you know, here's number one is the, the glaring huge problem that most everybody has that they don't know that they mm -hmm. have. And here's number two and like, here's how to fix those. And if you do a webinar that told people and then they went in and they checked their network or whatever you're, you know, you have, and they're like, Oh, we had these problems. That's huge. Right. And okay. You offer a course that's $1,500. That's a com comprehensive security course that is you're going to learn everything that could potentially happen, how to stay ahead of, you know, like all of these problems. And, you know, you know, your, your course better. It's sometimes you're just so close to the information that you have, you forget kind of what is valuable information because you've been doing it for so long. And you also, you know, it's hard to, to package it sometimes. Okay. So if you can figure out how to really lay out the value and convey as much value as possible and make it so that it makes sense. Does that sound like it would be something that would work for you though? Like it, it does. It, it, and so right now I'm actually headed in the wrong direction based off of what you just, because what I was, <laughs> what I started to do was build out a course for a, uh, a, a comp T a certification course. What's that deal? And who's that for? Uh, so these are for individuals that want to become DOD 8517 compliant in order to uh, uh, obtain jobs with the federal government. I don't think that that would be a bad idea though. Cause like, that's what you do right now as a contractor, correct? Right. Exactly. And the, in the 8570 chart shows exactly what you need to get in order to become IAM one, two, three level compliant and IA two, I'm sorry, IAT level one, two, three compliant. Um, it's basically a roadmap on mm -hmm. what you need in order to become compliant. 
So I actually think that's a great idea. And here's kind of the way. So I used to sell homes and stuff and I was uh, did, did real estate in a broker before um, I did marketing full time. Mm-hmm. And um, I would work with VA clients. That was like the niche and specialty that I worked with. So I worked with a lot of veterans who were out of, of the service. And just in general, like that is a huge demographic demo of people that once they get out, they're not sure what to do. Right. And they have resources and stuff. And so if you made a course that was like, Hey, would you like to be a contractor? You know how it works. You know, the internal systems, you know how everything works inside. Now you right. can, when you become a civilian, all of a sudden you have the ability to get this certification. You have a job that has the potential for, you know, six right. figures without, you know, solid job security with um, solid hours working from home and a lot of freedom and flexibility. Right. You're also navigating that framework that you're very comfortable with. Because like as a civilian trying to get a job with the, the Department of Defense or anybody else, mm-hmm. it seems like it's difficult, right? Because you don't know how anything works and you're just right. an outsider in there. But if you're a veteran, if you're a vet and you're you know, jumping out into the workforce trying to figure out what to do, I think that that makes a lot of sense. Okay. So like, and you, you speak the language because you've been through everything that they've been through. And so you have a few really good things working for you. You have the trust um, that somebody who's, you know, gone through their experience has. And that was one of the things, like when I would work with my, my VA clients and things, I was a realtor. I hadn't been, I've never been in any of the armed forces or anything. And they would be like, well, have, did you ever serve? Or, and that would always be like a thing of like, well, right. <laughs> you didn't serve, like, you know. Right. But yeah, I, I know. Uh, sure. Yeah. I've had, yeah. Especially your story of signing up on 9-11-2001. That's amazing, well, you know? Well, well, I didn't, so I didn't sign up that day. I was in the, in what's called the de, uh, the delayed entry program. And so that day was the day I was to ship out. Yeah, so that's even crazier, man. <laughs> you thought it was like no big deal. We're not, we haven't been in any conflicts in a long time. We're all good. And right, right. This happens, right? I have a lot of those clients. I had a lot of those clients, and just like, you know, a lot of because I'm in Southern California, so we have a lot of Marine Corps. Yeah, we're in all kinds of crazy things, and mm-hmm. it was gnarly. So, anyways, they, you know, you, you're speaking their language. It's a lot of of people that are trying to figure out what to do next, and it's. I think that would be an easy way to target because you have all of those demographics of people that are getting out. Of, of service and it's a a simple targeting option. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So I think that's a great idea. So that, I mean, like as a first project, the first option to try out, that makes Mm -hmm. a lot of sense. Is that kind of who you were thinking of targeting with that? Or did you have any thought of that? Yes. Yes. I mean, I, so when I initially started this thing, it, it, it was, it, it, I was working with the guy to, um, fill, fill seats, um, for certification courses for, you know, folks that are actually government contractors that need to get certified. And I started to build a list, but I, um, what happened? It, it just, it just didn't work out. You know, it just didn't work out for me the way I thought it would. You still there? I'm still here. Yep. I stopped sharing that screen. Okay. And, um, and so I started to learn about the whole online course thing, you know, I'm like, well, I can, I can scale this. this. This will scale better than me going out and actually going all over the, all over town, sitting in new classes for eight hours every day. Yep. Um, and so it just started to make more sense to me to do it this way online. Um, and like I said, I live, I live out in the woods, man. I, I have some acreage and, you know, I have a lot of, you know, time on my hand to put this stuff together. So very cool. And and uh, back to the, the, the previous website, there was a uh, I noticed a uh, a typo on there. It really? Was, yeah. Which one was it? Um, there was there were one of the courses. Um, veterinary was spelled wrong. Thank you, man. Yeah, no problem. Uh, if you go down some right lower left box. It is spelled wrong. That image is spelled wrong. Look at that. Man, that's um, some proofreading skills you have there. I just, I don't know. I 
So this image is different than that one. Okay. This image is okay too. That must be that specific size of it because it is spelled wrong right here. How strange. Yeah, it just caught my eyes. Yeah, that's amazing. <clears throat> but um, so I mean, what? How do we move forward? I mean, what? what so my my suggestion would be to create so a a webinar that you're going to use to basically attract and segment the audience to the offer. So figure out what's the offer. So do you need to get your course approved by a governing body or like what's what's that next step? No, I don't. So is it going to get them ready to take a, a test or something? Yes, it's okay. going to get them ready to take a CompTIA, uh, uh, a security practitioner course, which is a IAM level three course. Okay, cool. So here's here's how I would suggest IAT, IAT, getting started with like the least amount of resistance and that will let you test everything. So the first thing would be to create a webinar that says, you know, are you out of the service looking for the next thing? Like discover how to get great pay, work for the DOD as a contractor and use the skills that you have to, you know, do, do something for the next phase of your life. Right. And it would, that's like super general. It would mm -hmm. be a lot more emotional based of like, what, what should you do next? And you know, story and all kinds of things. But then you have a webinar that sells a course. The first time that you do it, I would suggest doing it live so that you don't go in. Like if you said, okay, I'm going to go make everything and you professionally produce it and you make videos and you make, you know, everything and you spend a hundred hours making something and then you go to sell it and it is not the right messaging or the right marketing. That yeah. just, you, you sunk all that time into it. So if you do a live course that you can record and split up and refine, you can teach people how to do everything and make it very special because it's the first time. And so you're going to go through and maybe do a live live course weekly for each one of the modules that, that you go over. Plus you're going to do a study prep that you're going to do one-on-one -on -one questions in a like zoom call setting like this. Right. Mm -hmm. So then people can be on there and you can talk about last week's stuff. And if they have questions about, you know, things and practical applications and like what's going to be on the test and, and stuff like that. And that way you're making it as you go. So you, you'd create that webinar that's going to sell it. And the selling of it would be that, hey, we're starting a course. By the end of this course, you're going to have this. You're going to be able to take this test and pass it. You're going to get this support. You're going to get this ongoing help. You have to sign up because we're starting in 10 days. The course starts in 10 days. Okay. And so if you sign up for this first one, it is going to be like $495. As I move forward, it's going to be $1,500 for the recorded on-demand one. Right. But this exactly. is the first, like you make something, the special deal for the first round of people. And so you advertise that webinar, that webinar sells the course that's going to be live and created at the same time. And then I think that would give you everything you need to get, get moving. Hmm. Especially with Thinkific, you're going to have, so like the way that you do it is you'd, you'd sell the course on Thinkific, you do the live event and then you drop that into each module. So then it would be on demand replay of everything that they learn. Plus they get one on, they get greater access to you because it's the first time going through. Right. How long should these webinars be? I would say make them as long as they need to be, but that's it. You know, if you say I'm going to make them two hours long, but it's only 30 minutes of material, like it doesn't help anybody that it's extra long. You just right. need to talk about what is going to be covered and why it's important and what they're going to learn from it. Okay. And you, like, you know, this subject extremely well. It's like Brett, my one client that does this veterinary dentistry stuff. Like he, he doesn't have to prepare for this stuff because he knows it so well, you know? Right. Okay. And so I would have like a general outline of what's going to be covered in the course, you know, for each section and why that's important and what it does for you. And then, you know, especially when you're selling on a webinar, the, I, I think probably, a good webinar um, formula is it's Russell Brunson's webinar formula. Have you ever heard of Russell Brunson? I have. So Russell has a, a formula and it's basically you make three big statements. Like here's what you're going to learn. Big thing. Number one, big thing. Number two, big thing. Number three. So like maybe, and then you, you pre-sell and each one of the items helps you to sell the, the end product. And so it's just a really simple format formula for, 
for selling things on webinar. Okay. Um, um, I, I actually have, have that formula thing. I can send it to you. It's like a PDF that I bought from Russell once. I'll send it to you. So, so I'm going, uh, so I'm, I'm actually probably going down the wrong path by um, putting the content I have in, uh, in Thinkific in text format. I should, I should do webinars. <clears throat> I think if you do a mix, it just adds additional, hmm. additional value. So like okay. what, what's some of the content that you have in there? As an example. Um, right now I'm, I'm posting stuff on uh, risk. Um, I, uh, IT governance and risk management. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have, I have a module created on that now. Yeah. And so, uh, governance frameworks, the impact of good governance. Um, so like that, I mean, that's just super valuable to the people that are going to be taking that, right? It's not valuable to anybody else except those who are in the course already. So okay. I think, cause if you have somebody who's, you know, getting out, and they're not sure what they're going to do next, right? Their risk, I, I, risk governance isn't like super valuable to them. But if they're going to be prepping for the test, then yeah, that makes a lot more sense. And it's right. ongoing support too. Right, 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 right. As a contractor, do you get support or is it like you're on your own? Like they just say, hey, we got this problem. Here's what you need to do. Uh, when, when I get on the job? Yeah. Uh, well, you, you're, it all depends on how, how your, uh, your coworkers are and, and what you, what you know, if you get in there and they tell you what you need to do and you know what you're good to go with, if not, you have to lean on research and your coworkers. So like that would be a great ongoing benefit, especially for the first people you could build out a recurring like mastermind group so that if they need help and they get a job and they don't know what to do, mm -hmm. what would they do? Then you're kind of like their mentor ongoing and you could include that as a, a benefit of being in the live class type of a thing. Okay. So okay. that that would be really valuable. Okay. That's what that's what Brett does for his. So he has a it's called a a case network. So they can take pictures of the X rays and send them and be like, what should I do here? And then he'll say, here's what you need to do. This is to extract these two teeth and leave this one. And they okay. Say, cool. Yeah. I just, they pay fifty yeah. bucks a month to be in that just to submit. You know questions in a Facebook group. Okay. I just, I need to be careful. Um, uh, oftentimes these positions, probably confidential stuff. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Classified. So. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. But if they said like, I have this problem, they need this, this thing fixed in general, like what would be right. They, it, they could probably talk about things generally like we have this, this problem, not talking about the specific situation. Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, people will, you'd be amazed at what people will tell you. Um, <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> I mean, but, I, um, yeah, I used to get that a lot doing real estate. People tell you all kinds of crazy things. Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay. All right. Well, so I think this is probably a good place. Like it, it can get overwhelming, right? So, yeah, it, is, so it is. It so is. So I think the next step for you is to define a webinar with the target market of being people that are getting out of the military right now or recently have gotten out of the military that are looking for a job transition. Okay. I think that that's a great demographic because you can choose organizations that are built for helping these, these people. Oh. There's so many like targeting for like – hero job fairs and events and like that, that's a super targetable demo to be picking, especially on Facebook and Instagram. Really? So there's a demographic you can target that is. Yep. Okay. Let me, um, let me show you here what we can pull up really quick. Okay. Good grief. I just have to set this up before I can go to the next step. That's why I'm. What do you think about Facebook? <clears throat> using Facebook ads. 
I think Facebook ads would be great for it. I've done a lot of um, marketing to veterans on active and um, retired for the old loan stuff that I used to do. Um, and it's a great place because there's so many different ways to. Uh... All right. So um, the targeting, I think that for you, things like Operation Homefront. Oh. Like okay, those... veterans, veterans organizations. Okay. Um, as well as like you can choose the uh, armed forces. Where is that? So United States Armed Forces. Um, you, you can do job titles of the, um, let's say. So you have employers, 3.7 million people is in the target size for U.S. Army. Uh -huh. That's that's a good one. Um, and then, you know, if you target age ranges for Army, so don't, like, if you target 18 to 24 for Army as employers, they're mm -hmm. probably going to be active, right? Right. And so you want to probably be targeting 26 to 40 is just mm -hmm. a guess, right? Right. And, um, so do Army, Navy, Marine Corps. I, I'd say especially Marine Corps. Just because when they get out, skill sets don't necessarily transfer. I got you. You know, like if they're a Navy electrician, like they have work that they can get outside and a game plan. But if they've been, you know, infantry, infantry they're going to have limited options. Right. Understood. Or even like certain mechanics too, you know, like it depends. I had a client that was a mechanic for like one specific vehicle. I can't remember what it was. And he's like, yeah, it's like, I only need that one. <clears throat> wow. And so it's like, he didn't have any options when he got out. Wow. Man, that's so, unfortunate. Yeah. yeah people it was unfortunate. think about this stuff when they. No. Yeah. Okay. So, um, anyways, those, those targeting options will be great. When you're doing your ads, you should absolutely be targeting for a pixel event and I can show you how to do that, but you use fit Facebook pixels. So you have complete registration is the face. This is a called ad espresso, but if you use ads manager inside of Facebook, yep. you have those, those conversion events. So if you go to ads manager, where is it? <clears throat> when you click create campaign, you're going to go through and then you're going to be targeting for, you know, do consideration, which you're targeting for. Mm -hmm. And then you will be using the um, Conversion of uh, generated lead will be your your conversion event. So you use conversion tracking. It's this section right here. Yeah. <clears throat> when you use your Facebook pixel for that tracking to happen. Okay. Okay. And so. That's kind of it. Okay. So I would say that like in addition to anything that you can do as far as content, um, like specifically telling your story and making sure that your story is personal to you and, and relevant to this whole funnel, I think that makes a, a big difference, right? So mm -hmm. what your experience was, um, friends of yours, what they've experienced in, in the industry, I'm sure that like for your job title that, that you do, like it's just almost exclusively people that have served, you know? Um, and so that would make people feel comfortable and make them feel like they can actually do this instead okay. of, you know. So I think that's the biggest thing is, you know, credibility. Like you, you need to 
weave into your story that you served and all of all of that is it's just super personal and will help to get people to be like yeah i know he's just like everybody else that i served with you know that exactly. i that i trust in and like and then taking them through what they're going to learn and why this is a good option for them and so okay so yeah. number one is the is okay. the webinar landing page for the webinar i would say do you um like webinar softwares, the Zoom is great. That's what we're on right now. That's mm -hmm. uh, easy to use. You can record it and you can fit up to 100 people in a, a webinar. Um, or if you pay for more space, you can fit more people in there. Um, but I, I don't think you're going to have to get huge numbers on your webinars to make good money with it, you know? Right. So you well, get like wait. 150, 200 people register, you know, maybe 70 to 80 show up and then more watch the replay. So you need to have the webinar, you need to have a replay that goes out, and then you need to have an offer that says, you know, buy here, here's what you're gonna get. And you need to sign up before this date because we're gonna start the course and that's a great sense of urgency. Like once right. we're actually recording it, it's going to be on demand as well as live. So you get the extra bonus of getting access to me. In the future, it's only gonna be recorded and like that makes it exclusive and makes it more value and all that stuff. Yeah, I see. Yeah, there's a there's a uh, plan art to it. Um, I got you. And this is probably yeah, you probably knock this stuff out yourself real quick. Um, <clears throat> all right, Brandon. Well, I need to get to work. All right, um, man. Will I you let me know what I can do to help you? Oh, absolutely. Will do. Don't hesitate to reach out, but it was good good meeting you here and uh appreciate appreciate you jumping on this with me. All right, thank you. I appreciate you, Brandon. Have a good one. Have a good one. Bye. Sorry, buddy.